welcome to this continuing ministerial development webinar on missional leadership. We're thinking about what kind of leaders or what kind of disciples of Christ do we need to be in order to lead our churches into mission, in God's mission. At this stage, as we are navigating our way, uh, we hope out of the pandemic. I'm going to share my screen. And here's a, 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 an opening thought around signs. This is a church sign. And uh, I do like collecting pictures of church signs. This particular church would always have these uh, home drawn signs, which are basically saying in different ways, we're OK. We're all going to be with the Lord forever. But you lot, you're going to go to hell or words to that effect. And um, I would always walk past this particular church, and it's not a Baptist church, I would say, and wonder what on earth do the visitors who might take the trouble, if they ever do, to read the sign, think about this particular church. Interestingly enough, I would say now that this church is closed, and uh, I am not surprised that it is. Here's another sign, just a bit of humour. And uh, as we all know, Jesus did say that rail replacement bus services to all destinations are this way. That's obviously the message translation of uh, I am the way, the truth and the life. But let's think about signs and the words of Jesus. The Pharisees and the Sadducees came and to test Jesus, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He answered them, when it is evening, you say it'll be fair weather. The sky is red and in the morning it'll be stormy today, as it is this day that we're recording. The sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. Then he left them and went away. So there's a lot of different ways in which the word sign is used. The, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are wanting Jesus to, to do something to prove that he is uh, uh, the Messiah, that he is uh, different from other rabbis. And Jesus isn't going to play their game, as is always the case, because he knows even if he were to give them that sign, it wouldn't make any difference. And he says, actually, you're a perverse and adulterous generation because you are wanting to have this particular kind of proof. It's not going to work. He says he will get a sign. Uh, and that sign will actually be not now, but after you do your very worst to me, I'm going to be with you. You're going to get rid of me. And only then will the sign come, the sign of Jonah, the sign of resurrection. And as we know, even when they got that sign, it didn't persuade them to become followers of Jesus. But he also says you can't interpret the signs of the times. And I believe there's something about missional leaders that God calls us to interpret the signs of the times, to look for the signs, the signs of God at work. Where is God and the spirit moving in our community, in our churches, to have those eyes of faith, to see where God is present and active? And also to understand, to understand our culture and what's going on, to understand our church culture and what's going on. Here's a particular church sign from one of our Baptist churches. and. Uh, just to make the comment that uh, through the pandemic, uh, there were no family services on Sundays at three. Uh, and even now at this point, uh, they haven't yet got back to uh, Wednesday Bible studies or prayer meetings. So, so we're working on that one. And family services. I don't know when was the last time this church had anybody under the age of 50 in their worship services. But that's... Uh, a, 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 a point to think about, not just this particular church, but your church. If passers-by go past your building, is it open or is it shut? What is your building and what do your signs say to those who are passing by? And other ways in which people um, visit our churches, our websites. What does your website say about you? Are people going to be drawn to the church or put off the church by their experience? Something for you to ponder. You might also want to ponder what are the signs 
of the present times. In the conversation we had in this uh, live webinar, uh, we talked about the anxieties and the, the ongoing malaise of isolation and, um, and also caution uh, around COVID, that we live in a, a risk-averse culture, if you like, because that's the language we've been using for the last two years. But another way in which we can be assigned, John, in his gospel, talks about the miracles of Jesus as signs, things that point to who he is. And as Jesus has now commissioned us to be his physical body here on earth, in what ways is our ministry a sign that points people to him, to who he really is? Signs of the kingdom of God in our midst. You might want to ponder that more theological question. Here are five principles of missional leadership very briefly. Firstly, I believe missional leaders are called to be practitioners. That's what I've always felt in my role as an MBA mission enabler. I'd be a fraud if I wasn't actually practicing mission in my daily life. That's why our Camino group has got going in the Tyne Valley, a missional community. That's why I'm seeking to be involved in uh, groups like our uh, Park Run community uh, and other areas of, of local town life in Prada, where I live, so that I am able to get out of the church bubble and meet people. And, and people look at us in our churches as leaders. And yes, they will listen to what we preach. But if our lives are not missional lives, then they are not going to be missional people, be less likely to, because they're not seeing that missional example. Whereas if we are leading missional lives ourselves, then other people are more likely in our churches to engage in missional lives themselves. And it's about what we do, how we practice much more than what we say. You may be familiar with this uh, diagram. This is from NICC. And on the left, if the red dots represent the proportion of people in society who are followers of Jesus, maybe around 6%. That's quite optimistic, I think, for the North East. I think it's a bit less than that. Uh, and the whitey grey dots are, are the people who are not. But when we gather together, whether it's Sundays or other times, we're all like that uh, little um, diagram on the left, in the left-hand corner. But through the rest of the week, when we're not in our church gatherings, we're spread out through our community. We're not connected with each other, but we are in contact with many more people outside the church. And LICC talk about one's front line, the place where you will meet people who are not Christians. And I want to encourage you as a minister to find your front line, to develop a front line, to have places and people with whom you are able to engage in mission beyond your church congregation. Now, for many of us, it is those who come through the doors, maybe to our, uh, our missional activities around from our buildings, and that's fine. But alongside that, how are you also modeling mission in everyday life to your congregation? So ponder what your front line might be and how you engage uh, in mission with others, maybe where you live in your street, maybe through your, your leisure time activities, maybe through your networks of friends. Secondly, we need to listen well. We need to listen to God because in these ever-changing times, we, we are having to learn much more now to be flexible, adaptable, uh, able to respond to these things that come out of the blue that just shake and change the way we operate. So where is God in the midst of all the change and upheaval of COVID? Listening to what he's saying, able to respond, but also listening to what God is saying and doing through our community and through our church. Listening well is, is a key task of missional leadership. I want to encourage you to listen to those who have come to your church with a fresh pair of eyes, maybe the visitors, maybe those who are outside the church congregation. Would you dare to find some people in your community and just ask them, what do you think about the Baptist church? And see what their responses are. Listening to the voices of those who are not so familiar or not so positive about us. God might want to speak through those people as well. We ought to think we're a welcoming congregation. But coming back to the signs, actually, once we've been in a church for any length of time, we're part of the culture. And we need this fresh pair of eyes to look at our buildings, to look at how you enter, to look at actually whether the buildings are a barrier rather than a help. And to be honest, let's be honest, for many, many people, uh, coming into a church building is for them what, say, going into a betting shop or a 
Masonic Hall would be for you. Well, betting shops actually, you will notice, have changed. They now have transparent windows so you can see in and see what they're like. If only churches were more like that, so you could see directly into what's happening. Um, but we need to uh, find ways, not just of expecting people to come to us, but to get out to where they are. And then thirdly, develop your missional gifts. We all have gifts. Uh, and you might not feel that your main gift is, say, as an evangelist. You might be more of a pastoral person. You might be more of a prophetic person. You think of those Ephesians four gifts or apostolic. But each of these gifts has a missional dimension to it. Even the pastoral has a missional dimension. When you think of Jesus saying, um, I am the good shepherd, that pastoral image. He said, I've got other sheep to bring in who are not of this fold. His, his pastoral work involved mission. How can you develop your missional gifts? I want to encourage you to put yourself into places where you will develop those gifts. Put yourself to places where you have the opportunity to share faith, to do some evangelism. Put yourself into a place where you're going to be involved in social concern if you're not currently doing it. Find those places that are going to stretch you and develop those gifts. I want to encourage you to use a missional lens as leaders when you come to every aspect of church life, to see church life through the lens of mission and the impact on mission. So, for example, when we have our meeting agendas, uh, how much of that is taken up by the keeping of church life going? How much is mission and seeking to grow God's kingdom or work with God in the growth of his kingdom? In our Sunday worship, so often it's about looking after the needs of our own people. And yes, that's important. But how does our Sunday worship also have a missional dimension? The churches that tend to be growing the most through evangelism are those that regularly in their worship will have evangelistic messages, evangelistic opportunities to respond, that that culture of mission is part of what they do when they gather. And your online presence, whether that be your website or live streaming or uh, social media, are you just aiming at your church people and communicating to them? Or are you trying to engage in mission? One of my disappointments through the pandemic is we all went online, but so much of what we did was basically for Christians. We didn't develop uh, ways of expressing ourselves uh, online that, that were targeting uh, and relevant for those who are not Christians. Some churches did, but most did not. Your youth and children and any ministry of your church. My experience is for most churches, their youth work and children's work revolves around their own church young people and their own children. Not true of every church, but of a lot of us. Whereas 95% of our children in society are untouched by the Christian faith, completely untouched. They hardly get any religious education in school. Most come from generations now of non-church families. So how does the gospel penetrate that 95 percent are you engaging with your local schools are you doing work on the streets with your, your young people how are you engaging with these people do you have any vision for that kind of outreach and our small groups so often when we meet as small groups in churches it's for bible study and prayer and fellowship and those are all good things how many of your small groups have a missional agenda and mission is the lens in which they operate Oh, that we had more missional small groups in our churches. And maybe you as a missional leader can help pioneer some missional small groups that would influence and change that culture. Our leadership roles. Do we appoint people to missional roles in the leadership teams that we have in our churches? Do we have people who are tasked with developing the missional life of the church? And our models of learning. So often our, our way of learning is through reading stuff, listening to stuff, uh, sitting down and it being given to you. Whereas actually many of us learn by doing, learn by reflecting on what we've done. And so how are we enabling that mission to get embedded? Because we're doing it and we're learning as we do it. And then a final thought, your prayers, your prayer life as a church. How much of your praying is in the building or in your homes? How much of it takes place out on the streets, out in the pubs and the cafes, out and about where other people are? Let's take the life of our church and make it more missional. 
And then finally, have a big grasp of mission. Recognize that mission is not just evangelism. It's not just a tell on the top left there. This is a series of signs from Wakefield Cathedral. Uh, and these are the Anglican Church's five marks of mission that they've developed to, to demonstrate that mission is, is, is multifaceted. And maybe uh, we need to look at the areas of mission where we're weak and grow them. Is it evangelism? Uh, the tell. Is it teaching, making disciples? And I would argue uh, beyond what's on that board, making missionary disciples who will make other disciples. Tending by, by caring for need, that demonstrating the love of God in practice. Transformation by, by campaigning and working for justice and putting right what is wrong. And then finally, uh, one that's come in more recently to the Church of England and, and is becoming more uh, an issue for us as Baptists, the, the environmental, the creation care. Uh, so have a think of the breadth of mission and the mission that God calls you to. Where are you strong? Where are you weak as a leader? Where do you need to maybe stretch those missional muscles? and get them working. Two years ago, just before the pandemic, we had a, an event called Firestarters. We're looking to run another one in May. And, and Firestarters is, is, is a share, is a conversation that comes out of churches who have experienced significant growth through people coming to faith over the last few years. And they've reflected on their practice and their experience and talked together. And all the, all these churches are very different churches. They've recognized some things they have in common. Uh, and, and here are some of the factors, seven factors that underlie this evangelistic growth that these fire starters churches have seen. Firstly, vibrant and what they call aggressive prayer, really engaging deeply with God. And, and the fire starters approach is to tell those involved, will you pray with your church and commit yourself to pray that in the next year, we will see more baptisms than we've seen over the previous five years. Targeting, if you like almost not by calling God to account, but saying, God, we believe this is your will and your heart. We want to see it happen. God, make it happen. Pleading with God uh, for the, the lost souls of our community. Confident preaching, preaching that is uh, not just confidently rooted in God's word, but confidently sharing the Christian story and doing so evangelistically. Having a clear missional vision and clear missional roles so that the church knows what the mission is that it's about, that everybody is clear on what their place is in the church's mission. Having a clear understanding of commitment to what God is doing, letting God lead, being able to do that listening, as we said before, and then understanding what God's saying and committing ourselves wholeheartedly, whatever it might be, however costly. Uh, having evangelists in direction-setting positions. Do you have any evangelists in your leadership team? Who are the evangelists in your church? Do you even know who they are? Put them in places where they can have the most influence. Have an adventurous spirit asking, what's the worst that can happen? Uh, and when you ask that kind of question, actually, the worst is quite as bad as you fear. And so let's do stuff and not worry about uh, the negatives. Let's have a can-do mentality. And then finally, re regularly reinventing the trellis, the structure, so that you can continue to grow. Because as churches grow, they need to um, restructure to enable that growth to continue. That's why some churches plateau after they've grown for a while. Lots of what we could be said about that, but do come to Firestarters in May if you're interested. We'll be advertising that fairly soon. And then finally, some thoughts from Alan Roxburgh and Fred Romanuk, who wrote this book uh, 15 years ago now called The Missional Leader. Apologies for the quality of this slide. Uh, Roxburgh talks about the, the age we live in as being one of discontinuous change, sudden change, unpredictable change, change that comes across us and throws us into a new scenario. We know all about that in the last two years, don't we? Uh, this book in that regard was very prophetic. But even after COVID settles down, if it does, there will be new discontinuous changes that we will have to adapt to. Things that just mean that the the way we've been as church, the way we've done church, isn't going to work in the same way again. Oxborough and Romanuk talk about different zones of leadership. They talk about the emergent zone, the pioneering zone. Uh, they also talk about the, uh, the zone where you um, are, are, are continuing and developing the work, the progressive kind of zone. But also there's this reactive zone of leadership. How do we react when the discontinuous change comes along? How do we react? 
do we just say, no, we're going to keep it going as we used to do it. Uh, we're going to resist any forces to change. Uh, but when the crises come, when the way you've been doing things isn't working anymore, how does the church respond to that? Are you able to reconfigure? Are you able to cope with a bit of chaos and crisis and be that calm leader in the midst of it all? Because we need leaders who will help churches to stay focused on God in these troubling times. They talk about fostering a missional imagination, that, that we should be people who are captivated and driven and excited by mission and encourage our churches to be uh, imaginative, to be fired up, to tell the stories, to be a narrative culture and to be a, uh, a positive about change and development and, and help the church to believe it is possible. And developing those coalitions that will enable change. We need more than just ourselves. We need those other people that are our par partners on leadership and outside in the community who will enable that journey of change. And we need to cultivate missional practices. This book particularly talks about the practices of hospitality and of learning. Uh, practices that enable people to be drawn in uh, and also for us to respond and to learn from them and from all the changes around. And then finally, missional leaders are called to be people who are trustworthy, that we are people that uh, aren't gonna let them down, which means we need to have good management of our own self, our own ego, our own uh, person and uh, our own lifestyle. So related to that authenticity, self-awareness, developing that awareness of self, your flaws, your difficulties, your weaknesses, and being humble with it, not trying to project something that isn't true to who you really are. Having courage to go with our convictions, to lead the church forward, uh, not just to be held up by those that might be um, against us. There will always be opponents, but do we have the courage to keep pressing on into what God has for us? But alongside that, not just neglecting those who, who are opposed, but to managing well the conflict, to engaging with those who think differently, of being able to work together collaboratively while also being firm in the direction. Some of the qualities that we need as leaders in this age. So there we go. Those are some thoughts on missional leadership. And... Uh, if you would like to talk more, I'm very happy to do that with you, with your church, with your leadership team, or to uh, uh, have maybe another webinar into the future where we explore these matters further. God bless you, and may he lead you on that journey as a missional follower of Jesus in leadership. Amen.